green people would have people who knew heavy metal people. Green people would have people who knew heavy metal people. Green people would have people who knew heavy metal people. Hey there, this is Melorian, and this will be a War Machine Battle Report. Sorry for the blurry picture here in the beginning, but uh, what I'm going to actually be playing here is actually Osram. He is the uh, most recent of the uh, Searforge Dwarf casters here, and I really like Gorton. I'm starting to really fall in love with Durgan. But Osram, I didn't never really like the idea of him, but everyone says Melorian, and you got to try Osram. So I thought, okay, let's give this a try. I'm going to be up against my buddy Ivan here, and he's going to be trying out a Doomy 3 list, so that should be interesting. And we're also playing on this neat board of Ivan's, which is all these different pieces that you get to put together and make up the board. So it's really pretty and looks really awesome. Um, the We will see the lines is going to make it a little bit easier to guesstimate and be able to, to know how far everything is, but that's just something the way it goes. Um, the scenario here will be something different. Uh, this one here, it is kill box, first to five. If you destroy the enemy's objective, you get one point. There's two flags. You can see the one on the left, the little box there. There's another one on the right behind a tree, but you can control those for one, dominate for two. And between the objective, the forest, and the obstructions on the right, uh, that one flag will be a huge issue. So, uh, yeah, it will be pretty interesting. Now, over on this game, the way I see it going down is that I have a lot of shooting. That's really what Osram is really all about. He has snipe. He really kind of lets that Earthbreaker does his thing uh, between shoot, shoot, shoot at far range and pop feet and get to actually get some extra threat out of it. So hopefully I can shoot down a lot at range. Uh, the feet, of course, are Doomy 3 where I minus one damage dice and he heals D3 every single time. Yeah, that's going to be really hard to deal with. But maybe what I'll try and do in that turn is I'm kind of learning in Doomy 3. You just focus on the stones, maybe go for assassination, and uh, we'll see what happens. Now, luckily, I won the initiative, and so I decided to take first turn. And basically what I do is I put Snipe onto the Earthbreaker. I put Fire for Effect onto Epic Iris. So, you know, if I ever need to land that shot, boosted the hit, boosted damage will be pretty nice. Uh, otherwise, what happens is I have all my Pathfinders trying to deal with the forest on the right. I have Ayanna and Holt that are going to be kind of hiding behind my Tactical Arcanist core. And on the left, my Gun Mages could have been further up, but I decided to stay further back just to make sure I was out of range of those Bushwhackers. You know, I have Snipe, I have the longer threat, so I want him to come forward into that uh, trees there, thinking he's safe, but I actually, with my... my uh, unit attachment, I ignore concealment and cover, so it should be really easy for me to shoot these guys down. So my opponent's turn, he is going to be going up, as you see here, uh, the Earthborn is kind of going on the right flank, and that's going to be a real pain. I have no extra heavy that can go over there and deal with him. Uh, I'm just going to have to stall and eat it and kind of see how that goes. Otherwise, Mountain King is down the center. You can see the Bushwhackers kind of went up on the left, not really too extreme, still kind of holding back. Uh, otherwise, on the, well, with Doomy 3, he is going to dump almost all of his fury into the stone, do the spell so that he can't be knocked down, or his whole battle group can't be knocked down. And uh, that's it, he's camping one. So I actually honestly wondered if I should go for the assassination right now, because if I pop feet, my Earthbreaker can walk up six inches, has 14 and 16 inch range guns. You know, I can then put Snipe onto something else. I can shoot him with Epic Iris, with Alton Ashley, with all my Nis Hunters, and I might be able to actually kill Doomy 3 right now. But when I try going through the math, it's going to be really dodgy. Plus, I don't want this game to be really boring. So we're not going to go for that, and we're going to try going for that Mountain King instead. So a cool thing about Osram that I got to really like is that within his uh, command range anyway, your friendly faction models can move three through each other. So it's really awesome. So I start things off with Ayanna Holt going through the ta Tactical Arctus Corps to go and try and shoot at the um, Mountain King. I want to get that spell off, so I'm getting plus two damage, but I'm just out of range. Uh, one of the things I was kicking myself for is in the first turn, they didn't go as far as they could have. They stayed behind the... The, the tactical Arcanist core there when they probably should have gone up a little bit farther. So 
without that damage buff, it's like, okay, whatever, not a big deal. I put tune up onto the Earthbreaker, so I get all my damage rolls are boosted, and then I start shooting into that Mountain King, and I start doing some really serious damage. Uh, plus, Alton Ashley shoots in him. It's nice we do an extra D6 damage. It's like, yeah, five damage to your spirit, because why not? Now, at that point here, he was down to about 10 boxes, and I figured, okay, I'm not going to be able to kill him, so abort that. You know, if I would have been in range with Diana, I think I could have actually done it, but whatever. He's almost dead, and so I decide to go for trying to destroy the stone. So, the, the aura on the stone, of course, getting plus two armor and everything is kind of a pain. And if I kill that, it's not only easier to kill the beast, it's also a lot easier, a lot easier to kill Doomy 3. So, I put Snipe onto my uh, Nis Hunters, so they have 16 inch range, and I just start shooting into that stone. I need six as the hit, fives for Selena, and then six is the force of tough, and I'm just going to rip that thing apart. And after I'm done shooting everything... I kill zero models. It was ridiculous. Um, yeah, just failing to hit. Failing to force a tough. I forced one tough and he made it. So, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, otherwise, the other thing that was disappointing is on the left, my gun mages go up and they go, okay, let's do this, do snipe. I'm going to try and shoot down these bushwhackers. But because he had stayed a little bit further back, I was out of range. So I killed off like a couple of them, but not very much at all. So not re really happy with the way that turned out. So on his turn then, he is going to be coming up into me on the left. The big thing there is that he is going to shoot me with that stupid mortar from the, the unit attachment. And that's going to go and kill up like four of my gun mages. Now luckily my UA survived, but he killed three with that. Killed another one with some other shooting. And, uh, yeah, my gun mages passed their uh, panic test, their command test. But, uh, yeah, that really, really hurt and was not what was supposed to happen there. Uh, otherwise, the Winter Troll runs up to the flag. So, because he went second, he is going to be getting the first point and get up on scenario. And I was really wondering what he was going to do with his beast and also a Doomy 3. You know, the Earthborn could have really ran in. But he decided to kind of keep it a little bit back right now. And I think the reason why he did that is because he did not pop his feet. Uh, I think the reason why he didn't do that is because between Hyper Regeneration and all the whelps, he can actually heal up the Mountain King quite a bit. And so what he decided to do instead then is the Mountain King moved over to kind of help protect Doomy 3 and then tried to kill off some of my support with a spray. Now, that's not a bad idea. The problem is that he targeted Ayana, which meant that Holt could use quick work or quick fire, whatever it was. And what I do is I take one shot with Holt, I hit, and I guess I shoot him in the tongue or something, but now he can't yell at me and he loses his shot. So that really wasn't good for my opponent. So all in all, you know, he did not get that much done. I lost some gun mages, but... Not then in the world. He got one scenario point. I should be able to handle that too. And now, because he didn't pop feet, I'm pretty sure that I can now be in range to destroy his Mountain King in return. Especially since I now have Ayana to get that plus two damage spell. So in my turn, I upkeep both my spells, Snipe on the Earthbreaker and still Fire Effect on uh, Epic Iris, because why not? Uh, one of the things I really find here is that I have a lot more focus than I need. Uh, because I can put on tune-up and get automatically damage, uh, boosted damage rolls with the Earthbreaker. You know, since I'm going after low defense stuff, I don't really need any focus on him at all. So, yeah, I have, like, extra focus to spare. So why not? Uh, otherwise, on the left, we'll just go left to right. The gun mages go up, and they start shooting up the uh, bushwhackers there. I kill off that annoying little mortar, so that'll be really nice. Uh, they barely pass their command test. Uh, Victor Pendrake runs up because he's hard to kill the beast, so he's there to be in the way of the winter troll and also contest the flag. But as you can see there, I'm also contesting it with that big old earthbreaker. The way I line that up is that Ayana and Holt move out of the way first. They get the plus two damage spell on their Mountain King and get a couple of shots with Holt. I go and I move the Tactical Arcanist core. They do some shots. Then I go with Osram. I pop my feet. So that gives just my Rulik models. So that's really just my Caster, Thor, and the Earthbreaker. I get 
plus uh, two speed, plus two armor and pathfinder. So with that extra speed, I have enough to charge into the, the Mountain King and it was really easy for me to kill him. So I have extra attacks to kill some whelps and otherwise now I am locking down that left flag. I've taken down his gargantuan and that is a massive blow for my opponent. So with all that said and done, I decide to keep on going with the uh, the Nis Hunters, and uh, first of all, I want to get one engaged with the Earthborn. I want to get a lot of them over by the Earthbreaker so that he can't really trample to me and have a good landing spot. And then I decide, let's go after this stone again. And I kill off like a couple of models, but still, it's like, I just, I just can't do it. I just can't kill off this stone. So whatever, um, that's just the way it is. So on my opponent's turn, this is definitely going to be his feet turn because uh, if he doesn't use it now, I don't know when he's going to. Uh, on the left side, what he does is he goes and he shoots with his bushwhackers to kill Pendrake. Uh, that worked out. And then he goes down with his winter troll. And this was a nice move here where he went to go and spray my Thor to kill him. But he was just out of range. He was like two millimeters out. So Thor gets to live and I still get the tune up. So that's awesome. Otherwise, what happens is that like I said, with Doomy, he puts admonition on himself. So if I try going after him and end up within six, he can just dance away three inches. And then he pops his feet. His little scroll buddy does lamentation. So any spells I cast will be double cost. And then uh, the big thing that happens is that the Pyre Troll throws a fireball into the Nis Hunters, kills a good chunk of them, puts Selena on fire. I was really lucky she didn't die to the, the hit alone. And then he decides to take a free strike with the Earthborn just to run over to Epic Iris. Uh, just so I can't shoot off Admonition because the feet will still be going on his turn. So not only am I a minus one damage dice and he'll heal, but he also has boosted the hits. So whereas normally I might risk the free strike to try and shoot off that Admonition, um, I can't do that because he's going to boost to the hit with plus two to hit. So I'll die for sure. Uh, another thing that I notice here as well is that the way I have this positioned is that now my Earthbreaker is within five inches of uh, uh, Epic Iris, so I can't allocate any focus to it. So that's really, really, really bad. So I'm really limited what I can do onto my turn here. Um, I would love to try, like, I, it's really hard to kill any beast, even a light beast, especially when you don't have any focus to allocate. Um, if I had any focus, I might have decided to grab the Earthborn and throw it away just to try and knock it down and keep it away from my caster, but I can't do that. So what I'm going to try and do is, again, try and finish off the stone. I'm going to go and try and shoot down the uh, Winter Troll, and if nothing else, try and really cripple it. And then with the Earthborn, at first I was wondering if I could get off a Stranglehold. That would force him to forego either his movement or his action and really kind of make him useless. But it's just this forest, this bloody forest I'm dealing with and my tiny little dwarf legs. It's just not going to happen. And uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to have to kind of run away from him. So on my turn, that's what I do. I go up with my gun mages. They shoot up the remainder of the uh, bushwhackers there, and I'm able to kill off all but one, and the last one fails his command test, so that's pretty cool. Otherwise, I move up, and I do tune-up, so I get boosted uh, damage on the Earthbreaker. Uh, start trying to shoot into the uh, Winter Troll there. I should also mention that he actually did kill Ayana last turn, uh, I can't remember what actually did it. Uh, oh, that was the fireball, right. Uh, by the way, the fire went out on Selena, so that was nice but, nice, but I have no more damage buff. So I start shooting into the Winter Troll, get some nice spikes, but the Winter Troll does survive. Uh, otherwise, with my Nis Hunters I, and also Holt, I am able to kill off the stone, so the stone is gone now. And otherwise, I just go with Osram and I go to the other side of the objective to try and be safe from the, the Earthborn. Try and block him there with Iris a bit. And uh, that's really it. So not too bad. I'd hope to kill a, a Light Beast. But again, it's Doomy's feet. I couldn't allocate focus. It's just kind of the way it goes sometimes. And this, then this happens. And uh, I was really, really scared. Uh, for starters, 
he uh, gets to go up with the winter troll and he sprays at me trying to get a crit because if you get a crit with the spray you're stationary so i'd be pretty much automatically hit and that'd be really bad uh so he hits but fails to crit so i'm not stationary but he cranks the damage and does like six damage to me so i thought okay that's all right i'm glad i'm camping four but uh you know it's it's all right uh, and then what happens is that the Earthborn, because he gets extra speed from the forest or whatever, uh, he just takes the free strike because he doesn't care. Oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't take a free strike. He goes with a Pyro Troll, and the Pyro Troll shoots the Earthborn, and blast damage kills off Epic Iris. So that was a kind of really cool move my opponent did. And then once the Earthborn was free, because he was so fast, which I didn't see coming, he can just walk over and around and get to me. And uh, one of the things about the Earthborn is that his pow is kind of crummy. He's kind of a weak troll, but he steals the pow of the models he's around. And <laughs> Osram has a pow 7 weapon. Uh, so that's really, really, really bad. He's really, really, really strong against me. Uh, and so luckily, when he boosts it with the first attack, he misses. Now again, if I was stationary, he just would have automatically hit. He boosts the hit with his second attack, does some okay damage, not really that great, uh, buys some others and misses, and that's really it. So, thank goodness I didn't get stationary, because if I was, if I was made stationary, it would just be over. But, uh, I survive. So otherwise, this is how it kind of ends. You know, Dooming 3 realizing that if this doesn't really do much, uh, he's kind of doomed anyway. He goes up and makes some attacks. And uh, that's really it. So now that I'm in this situation and I survived, I'm just going to kill Doomy. Uh, he didn't even cast a spell where he can't be knocked down. He knew that at this point here, you know, he, he just can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to turn around there and kill Doomy. So that's what I do. I allocate the focus to him. I, yeah, I just do things and pew, 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 shoot down Doomy. Actually, the, the one thing that almost saved him is I went to go shoot my torpedo that has knocked down and you need to directly hit for that to work. And uh, luckily I caught it before I shot it because Doomy with his reach was engaging in this hunter. And so I just targeted the pirate troll instead, hit him with the AOE. I knocked down Doomy 3 and then, yeah, once he was knocked down, all the shots, there's just no way he was going to survive. So, otherwise, uh, an interesting game. Osram, you know, he's decent. He He's interesting. He has some, some good spells. I don't know, though. I, I still do really love Gorton with that whole push feat and having a rock wall. And then also all the crazy tricks you can do with uh, Durgan. So... I'm not loving Osram. I'm respecting him, but I'll probably have to play him a few more times just to kind of get a better feel for him. So otherwise, guys, thanks for watching and we'll catch you later. Bye.